Hello and welcome to our series of mini interviews with industry experts, giving you useful tips and hints. During today's session, we will be finding more about Hydrolytes with Penny Price, who is renowned for her training courses throughout the world. So hello, Penny, and how are you today? Hello, Angela. I'm absolutely fine, thank you. <laughs> That's great. And tell us, what exactly are Hydrolytes? Well, hydrolats are actually the byproduct of distillation, so that when we make essential oils, uh, well, when we used to make essential oils the old-fashioned way by ordinary distillation, you'd have your plant material packed into the still, the water would be boiled into steam, pass through the plant material, re uh, dislodge the essential oil molecules, break them down. They'd all come out the other side in a condenser, and you would have two products. You'd have the condensed water, and you'd have the essential oil. And in those days, they used to throw the water away and keep the oil, <laughs> which is a change from the Egyptians who did exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, but then they've discovered recently, in the last 100 years or so, that um, the plant material that the water passes through, some parts of that are actually water-soluble, so that the water picks those molecules up and, in fact, is a therapeutic uh, product in its own right. So uh, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite a, a process, really. I mean, nowadays, they make essential oils in closed units, so the water keeps going round and round, and it doesn't ever get to condense until the last minute. Um, but there are people who specialize still in making floral waters where the water just passes through distillation once and comes out the other end nice and gentle and full of therapeutic molecules. Okay. And so exactly if somebody was to take a like what benefits are there and how do they actually work? Well, they work in a pretty similar way to homeopathic medicine. It's um, very, very gentle. The type of molecules from the plant that are soluble in the water are slightly, well, they're steroidal. They're, they're quite big molecules. They're too big for distillation into an essential oil, so they're quite big. And as we know, natural steroids are very, very good for keeping all our tissues mended and for keeping us healthy and keeping our eyesight good and so on and so forth and keeping us relaxed. Um, so if you do ingest them or spray them or bathe in them, they're very, very good for your skin, obviously. Natural steroids are very, very good for healing skin. But if you do take them internally, they're very regenerative and balancing in, internally. Um, I think the only problem is that uh, you have to make sure nowadays where fakes are made of every single thing you can think of that you do get a genuine hydrolat that has gone through the process of distillation. Can I just ask you, if somebody was going to take them internally, do they just take it as it is or do they need to dilute it? Well, some of them taste lovely. I mean, chamomile's fabulous. I love it. It's, it's quite lemony and sweet. Mm -hmm. And I can just drink that on its own. Um, but other ones, like rosemary or thyme, um, obviously they, they are a little bit stronger tasting because some of the essential oil molecules can be water-soluble as well, so the water picks those up, and they taste quite disgusting if you just take them from the bottle. So what I recommend is that if you put um, a couple of teaspoonfuls in the bottom of a glass, that's about 10 ml, and then top up with warm water and drink that, then that keeps the taste very diluted. And in actual fact, because the hydrolats are a little bit like homeopathy, the more you dilute them, the better they work. So, you know, because people say to me, oh, if you put just a teaspoonful or a tablespoonful in the bath, how is that going to work? But it's the same principle as homeopathy. That the more it's reduced, the better it works. And so I would say always um, dilute them and, and just add warm water, and it tastes rather nice, actually. Okay. And that's quite interesting because you mentioned just about the bath. So could somebody use it on their hair like that? Yes, you can do. It won't um, do the same work as a conditioner. It won't actually mm. uh, smooth down the, the outer layers of your hair shaft. But what it will do is it will keep your skin in good condition. So if you've got psoriasis or eczema or dandruff on the scalp, it will help there, and we obviously suggest rosemary. Rosemary is renowned for helping hair uh, growth and a healthy scalp. 
so I would say, yes, do that. Um, you need to just put it on as your final rinse and then maybe massage it into the scalp just to help bring up the circulation to absorb it more quickly because obviously our bodies are water resistant. It takes quite a long while for the um, uh, molecules to be broken down and taken through the skin. So you need to leave it on a little bit longer than you would a normal conditioner. Right. So if say somebody had a rosemary or thyme that they were growing at home, could they make their their own hydrolyte? It's Is it <laughs> Well, if they have a distillation unit, which of course you need a license to possess, then that would okay. be ideal because really you need to catch the vapors. But you can make um, something similar to a hydrolyte. You can make a herbal tea. So you could put your thyme into a saucepan, just chop, it, chop the leaves at first, wash them, chop them up, put them in the bottom of a saucepan, add your water, bring it to the boil, keep the lid firmly on so that the steam doesn't escape because that's the bit that you need and boil it for about 10 minutes strain out and you will have what we call a herbal tea it won't be a true hydrolat because it hasn't evaporated and then condensed again but it's the nearest thing that you will get to it at home and i think herbal teas are marvelous anyway so you know you're going to benefit in pretty much the same way I remember as a child we used to have lots of roses in the garden and the petals we would pick up and we'd put in water and soak them. Is, would that, is that kind of a very basic kind of hydrolac or would you not use that for anything? I can't remember what we did with it. <laughs> I do, I remember, I used to do it too. <laughs> used to put the rose petals in water and leave them for a few days and the water used to take on the aroma of the rose didn't it? And mm. that, it was sort of like a perfume you were making. Um, and what is happening over the time is, yes, the, the water-soluble molecules from the rose will be dissolving in the water as the petals decompose and break down. So, yes, that's a fairly similar sort of process. It's just not as high-tech as we would have in our clinic here, but it's a similar process. Because quite a few of the, the aromatic molecules will dissolve in water to a certain extent if you leave them in there long enough. So, yes, that's what you were doing, Angela. You were making perfume for your little self. <laughs> oh, right. It wasn't hydrolat, so that was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a type of hydrolat because it's, it's still got um, elements of the plant in the water which, of course, is what a tincture is, a hydrolat is, a, a tisane, an infusion, a herbal tea, and a homeopathic remedy. A bark flower, for example, is exactly that. You have the water and you drop in whatever, and the water takes the memory and the elements out. That's amazing. Well, we will find out more in another interview, but if you'd like to find out more about medical grade essential oils, carrier oils, hydrolates, or anything else to do with the room therapy training, etc. do visit pennyprice.com or you can email courses at pennyprice.com. Till next time, bye for now.